People might think that working with deadly spiders is really scary, but for me, it's incredibly exciting studying these deadly venoms to make life-saving medicines. I have the coolest job in the world because I get to travel around Australia collecting amazing spiders and venomous animals and then bringing them back to the lab to study what their venoms are actually made out of. Hi, my name is Dr. Samantha Nixon and I am a former arachnophobe turned venom scientist. First thing I do when I get to the lab is go and check on my spiders and make sure that they have plenty of water and food. It's crazy that I ended up in this job because I used to have genuine arachnophobia, which is a fear of spiders. And I mean genuine fear. I used to have nightmares about spiders and if there was a huntsman on the wall, I wouldn't be able to come into the room. And it was this desire to challenge myself to get over my fear that led me to come and work on spiders. And as I was working with these spiders, I learned that the vast majority of them are actually not dangerous to humans. It's really only funnel webs, redbacks, brown recluse, and Brazilian wandering spiders that pose a threat. So that means that 99.5% of spider species are not dangerous. And they really don't want to bite us if they don't have to. Their venom is very precious to them. And as long as we treat them with care and respect and give them the space they need, they're not going to bite us. This year is Nacho. She's a golden orb weaver, which is a common spider found up and down the east coast of Australia. These spiders get their name from the beautiful golden silk webs that they spin, which can stretch for meters between the trees, helping them to catch lots of insect prey. So a big part of what I do is trying to help other people find that curiosity and teach them about how cool spiders are so they can learn to appreciate them. I've always been passionate about our planet and our incredible wildlife. I started research in wildlife conservation, studying bilbies and wombats and helping them to overcome the threats that make them endangered. What then grabbed my interest was the intersection of wildlife and medicine. So I decided to join a venoms lab that was focused on harnessing the chemicals in venoms for drug discovery. It may surprise you to know that spiders have actually been around for over 350 million years. That's over 100 million years before the dinosaurs. My research studies what venoms are made from, how they work, and how we can apply that to medicine and biotechnology. You can think of a spider venom as like a 3,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, only there's no picture on the front of the box to tell us what those pieces look like and how they fit together. So we combine chemistry, molecular biology and bioinformatics to help figure out what all of those pieces are. And this includes using genomics, transcriptomics and proteomics. We then use biological assays, which are experiments using different organisms and cells that tell us how those toxins work in our bodies or on insects. And by combining that with the chemistry, molecular biology and bioinformatics, we now know what all of those puzzle pieces look like and how they fit together so that we have the big picture of the spider venom. For my research, I collect venom from the world's deadliest spiders, the Australian funnel webs. Funnel webs are actually unique among spiders in that they will drip venom from their fangs. As I gently tap the spider's legs with my forceps, this encourages them to drip venom from their fangs, which I suck up with a pipette and then put into a tube. We only get a tiny amount of venom from each spider, so we have to collect from many spiders to have enough venom to study in the lab. Once the spider's given up their venom, we give them a rest for about two months so that they can replenish their venom stock. 
This is a HPLC trace, which stands for High Pressure Liquid Chromatography. We use this special machine to fractionate the venom into the thousands of different toxins, according to the different chemical properties of those toxins. There are over 50,000 species of spider on the planet, with more still being discovered. Spider venoms have evolved into these incredibly complex mixtures with millions of molecules out there for us to discover from spider venoms. So this means that spider venoms are actually a huge natural library for new medicines and new technologies. So next time you see a spider, don't squish it. Just say thanks because it could potentially be saving our lives. I never imagined myself as a scientist, but I always loved, you know, studying the natural world. So I took biology and chemistry at school. And it wasn't until I met a real research scientist on a tour of the University of Queensland that I decided to study science. And then I did a Bachelor of Biomedical Science and ultimately a PhD, which enabled me to get the research skills needed to do my job. Along the way, I put my hand up to do a lot of volunteer research in different research labs, which enabled me to get more skills in different science areas and appreciate how awesome Australia's biodiversity really is. So the key is to just be open to opportunities and put your hand up because you never know where it might lead you. My hope for the future is that people learn to appreciate spiders, not as creepy crawlies, but as beautiful animals that play a really important role in our ecosystem and potentially hold the key to developing life-saving medicines. And I hope that that turns into a broader appreciation for our planet, our environment and all living species. The ultimate question for me is why did spiders evolve such complex venoms? And more importantly, how do all of these thousands of toxins work? Because when we understand that, we're able to understand how the spiders fit in the ecosystem and we're able to take those toxins to develop them into eco-friendly insecticides and new medicines for a better world.